USI 2021 at the beautiful Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel. It's nearly true tales of innovation. I'm your host, Benjamin Glenn. I am here with my guest, Sean Chang of Philips Ventures. Sean, thanks for joining us at Emerging MedTech Summit 2021. Well, you know, this year is uh, a very special year, I think, uh, and there's multiple factors that, that you know, takes me out. I think I, I was here last year for the first time and um, obviously enjoy the setting here, but one thing that I, I was very surprised by was the quality of companies that I met. Um, if I look back to the entirety of 2020 and the type of companies that I, I talked to through the various conferences, JP Morgan, um, uh, the, the HIMSS conferences, and, you know, HLTH and, and all that, uh, this, rate, this one actually had the highest hit rate. Uh, so a lot of the companies ended up um, you know, coming back to the uh, network and getting in touch with our BD folks. Um, and we were able to really uh, develop some deals and, and good good stuff out of it. So I was actually looking forward to this. Um, and I was, you know, like Scott, I signed up right after the last year's conference. Uh, little do we know what happened afterwards. Um, but I think this year, um, it's also a very seminal moment for the med tech industry. And I think uh, being able to uh, meet in person, right? And, and you know, look you in the eye and, and uh, you know, enunciate words and, and say things in person is something that we're all trying to get back to used to, and I, I was I jumped at the occasion to to come back in person again. So uh, this year is very very uh, special in both ways. So as an investor, how was that shift to having to do things virtual? Were you able to transition, or how difficult was that to transition to kind of getting that feel when you're not across the table? Yeah, I think um, it was relatively easy for for me and for us as Philips Ventures. Uh, I, I think we we didn't really skip a step. Um, and uh, in any ways, in most ways, actually, we, we you know, increase in productivity. And so 2020 had more deal flow, more deals executed. I think we had a record year. Um, and so I think from an investor deal making point of view, um, you know, being in the virtual setting certainly helped. Um, and like I said, I think the this wasn't because you know, it's, we don't get to meet in person. That was a lot of, you know, uh, drag and slow things down. It was, that, it was actually, we had most of our deals, if not all of them, we'd already met in person. Uh, and then we were able to execute on those, you know, at, at home in the home office in a virtual setting. So, um, so I think that was one thing that was uh, you know, a change, but a welcome change. Um, beyond that, I think as an investor, Digital health and med tech, I, I think, you know, both caught you know, great rising tides uh, in this uh, you know, generous macroeconomic market where alternative assets like private equity and venture capital um, are, are being welcomed uh, and, and many you know, fund managers are, are putting more and more cash into this, these areas. And, and that, I think, spells a, a opportunity for companies, but also a problem in the frothiness of the market. And so we're getting... I think priced out of a lot of the deals uh, and the fundamentals are becoming less and less uh, real. And so uh, there's a bit of worry there from the frothiness, but also great opportunity um, in terms of just companies being able to raise cash uh, to last out the next you know, five to 10 years, I think. What's the sweet spot for Phillips Ventures? Like what's the, what's the ideal company coming in the door to you? At what stage do you like them to be at before they start the conversation or expect you guys to write a check? Yeah, so we, uh, we invest in three ways and uh, I'll go through all of them. So the first is through a digital health fund at the corporate level. We, we call that Philips Health Technology Ventures. Um, usually that's at the series A and B stage. Um, we treat that one as uh, more or less like a traditional fund where 
it's not a big back uh, strategic as much as just a, a partner to help um, early stage companies scale up. Uh, and so we usually take uh, a, a stake enough to take a board director's seat and so we can help the companies and influence them as they scale and bring the, you know, the, the mighty infrastructure of Philips. Uh, and so that's bucket one. The second one is uh, traditional uh, corporate venture capital investing, which is executing deals across all stages. Um, and so we're actually pretty open to uh, deals at the very early seed stage, if you have some traction, uh, all the way through to growth stage rounds much later. Um, and our business is really dictate you know, how that um, uh, is able to you know, move forwards in terms of deal making. Uh, and then we also invest in other VC funds too. So if it's not a fit for us, it might be fit for one of our you know, partner funds. Uh, and so we're, we're, we're very happy to you know, make those introductions to, to give the founders and entrepreneurs a chance at raising capital. Sean, you know, getting down to, uh, to LSI, this has been my first trip in you know, 15 months. I think we were both here last year. But the place I miss the most is going back to Boston. It used to be in and out of the Boston ecosystem, and I think I think you're familiar with my favorite place, which is the Liberty Hotel. Oh yeah. So don't you? You got a place back there that you haven't seen now for 15 months? Yeah, yeah. It, it's surprising, and it's a bit of a dream where you know that liberally. For those that that know me, Liberty was a second home, uh, and so I'd go there. I think you know for a quick dinner or or have breakfast meetings with other investors. Uh, and then on Thursday nights, you know, it's, it's when, when it's happening, we you know, gather with friends and you know, have a few drinks. In addition to just living around there, I think Boston is a, is a small place. And so when you look at, you know, the, the innovation there, especially in life sciences, med tech, uh, and digital health now more and more, um, you, you end up knowing a lot of people. And, and uh, you know, I miss it a lot. You know, I, it, I've transplanted over to the Bay Area somewhat for the last uh, 15 months, unplanned rather. Um, but you, you do miss that smaller ecosystem where, where you end up knowing everybody. And I'm actually looking forward to a lot of the folks at, you know, at, at this conference um, and uh, you know, being able to connect with them uh, coming out from Boston. Phillips is doing a lot more in Boston. Aren't you guys building out a headquarters at Boston Common? But so yeah, we've, um, you know, uh, carved out a part of the land in, in Cambridge next to the Leishmere station, which you know, was a lot of industrial land back then, uh, and then built out the first building there. Uh, and so uh, it opened in February 2020, uh, 2020 actually. So it opened in February 2020, uh, and we had a good, I think, three weeks run at it, and then, uh, and then it closed down, and we own the place. So uh, it's a really, really uh, big footprint <laughs> right now. Um, but we're really looking forward to, to going back in, in the office, uh, you know, I think in the second half of this year in 2021 mm -hmm. um, and trying to do more there. It's a great space. Yeah, um, and uh, I think, you know, there's going to be a lot more uh, other, you know, uh, companies that can build up next to us as well as smaller businesses. So uh, really, you know, playing into the local ecosystem as well. Um, we also thought about even hosting uh, early stage companies in our building because I think uh, we're taking up certain floors, but others are, are going to be taken up by others. So, oh, that's a great um, idea. That would be a, an interesting, uh, you know, uh, play moving into the future. But um, it, it's still TBD right now. Yeah, that's very interesting because you know if you think about sort of that side of the river, you know, MIT, and then you've got mostly it's a it's a big pharma footprint. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Cambridge is one of those areas where you know, I, I grew up in North Shore, Boston. So uh, you know, 20, 25 years ago, you, you go to Cambridge. It's not a place that you really wanted to visit or live. And I think it's you know, really turned around, you know, having M MIT there. Obviously, it's, it's, they've been there for much longer. But I mean, MIT and Harvard uh, in the backyard of there. And then with the investor and measure capital money, as well as I think the, the state of Massachusetts and the city of Cambridge, uh, revitalize the area, and I think there's, I think there's way, uh, ways to go to to match up with the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, but if I were to bet my career on where to be in the next ten years, I would say Boston and Cambridge is probably very high on the list, if not at the top. I think you're onto something. Boston's got that; it's close and it's uh, very diverse. Yeah. Sean, is there anything else you want to share with us about Phillips Ventures? Yeah, absolutely. So I think what we do at Philips is focus on what's called the quadruple aim. Uh, and that's really improving the patient experience, improving the 
uh, physician clinician experience, uh, improving outcomes and lowering costs. And so in all that we do, including on the investment side, it will be matching those four um, you know, key vision, key attributes and key aims. Uh, and so uh, for any companies that you know, we want to partner with and this many, it's, it, it needs to fill those things. And, and so I think you know, that's really driving what, what I look for in, in companies' investments moving forwards. Wow, that sounds great, John. Thanks for spending some time with us here at the Emerging MedTech Summit. Great, thank you very much. Sean.